We start with a puzzle. How is it possible for an object to have an average velocity of zero meters per second, but still to be moving? The solution will be given near the end of the video. Welcome to this Nothing Nerdy video on velocity and speed. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You must know and use the terms velocity, speed, instantaneous, average and relative. Acceleration is explained in the next video. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. It's about a runner who changes her speed and then runs further. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. Firstly, we must remember that quantities in IB physics are of two varieties, scalars and vectors. The difference is that a vector, as well as having a number and unit, also has a direction, which must be stated. For example, the distance to a building is 3 kilometres. This is a scalar measurement, because we haven't stated its direction from where we are measuring. But when we include a direction, for example, the building is 3 kilometres in a northeast direction, then the quantity is a vector, and we call it displacement. Displacement is defined as the distance moved in a particular direction from a specified origin. The origin is where the measurement is made from. When a question asks you to state a displacement or any other vector, you must make clear what the direction of the vector is, as well as its size and unit of measurement. Here is the definition of velocity, the rate at which displacement changes with time. Since it is calculated using displacement, velocity is also a vector and has a direction. Its units are derived from its formula. Displacement in metres divided by time in seconds gives us metres per second. Here is the formula which defines velocity. You can see in the formula that velocity v and displacement s are underlined, which shows that they are vectors. Time is not underlined because it is scalar. Like velocity, speed also measures how fast something is travelling, but it does not say anything about the direction. Speed is a scalar quantity and is measured in the same units as velocity, metres per second. So what is the difference between velocity and speed? Here's one example. This car is travelling at 20 metres per second around a bend in the road. As it moves, it is changing direction, so its velocity, which is a vector, is changing. But its speed is not affected by changing the direction and is a constant 20 meters per second. Here is a question to practice. We will show the working because this is an important skill to learn for IB exams. The speed limit on some European roads is 120 kilometers per hour. How fast is this in meters per second? We write the formula, state the values in the appropriate units, and then substitute them in the formula. We make the calculation, which gives us the number 33.33 recurring. We now write down the answer with its unit and an appropriate precision. In this case, we can't be sure whether the initial speed was given to two or three significant figures, and we choose to state it with lesser precision to two, 33 meters per second. We do not know if the car in the example is running at a constant speed, so the value we calculate is its average speed. At some point it could be driving faster and another more slowly than the average. The speed it has at a particular moment is called its instantaneous speed. This definition is an excerpt from the Nothing Nerdy Definitions and Concepts Dictionary, which you can download for free at a link in the video description on YouTube. An instantaneous value is one which is measured at an instant in time. The instantaneous value is what a speedometer shows at each instant, though the speed will change from moment to moment. This contrasts with an average, which is measured over a period of time. If you measure the speed of something when you are moving as well, the result you measure will be affected by your speed. The speed it seems to travel, as viewed from your point of view, is called its relative velocity. 
For example, the velocity of the bike, as seen by the moving car, is the difference between their velocities. The formula for relative velocity is sometimes used in exam questions, even though it's not in the data booklet. You must make sure you subtract in the correct order. The velocity of b, as seen from c, is the velocity of b minus the velocity of c. This works for movement along a straight line where positive and negative numbers are used. When the velocities are at an angle to each other, we use vectors. In this example, the smaller cyclist is travelling to the right at 13 metres per second and the larger cyclist is moving in the same direction at 17 metres per second. Taking the right-hand direction as positive, the velocity of small, as seen by large, is 13 minus 17, which is minus 4 metres per second. In other words, the small cyclist seems to be moving at 4 metres per second to the left, as seen by the large cyclist. If you imagine yourself as the large cyclist, this is what you would see, the other cyclist coming closer to you. This question is measuring average speed, so the direction is not important. We consider it in two stages. The first one, d equals vt, tells us the distance travelled, and that becomes 120 metres. The second stage, in a different direction, but its speed, it doesn't matter, becomes 60 metres, so the total distance travelled is 180 metres. That's in 40 seconds, we add the two times together, and that calculates as 4.5 meters per second average speed. Here is the puzzle we mentioned at the start. How could an object with an average velocity of zero be moving? The answer lies in the fact that velocity is a vector, and so when you calculate an average, some velocities may act in opposite directions and cancel each other. Since velocity is calculated using the change in displacement, the average velocity will be zero if it is calculated over a motion which returns to its starting point. For example, driving around a circular track.